Hi folks, I'm The Lost Mapper, and in this video I will cover three ways to convert single part layers into multi-part layers. We'll start with the most basic method and then work our way up to a slightly more complex but also more flexible approach. If you watched my video working with multi-part features in QGIS, then you can consider this an addendum to that one. If you haven't watched that video yet, you might want to check it out before watching this one. In any case, as a quick reminder, remember that in single part layers, each feature has just one piece of geometry associated with it. And in multi-part layers, each feature can have one or more geometries associated with it. For this video, I'm going to once again be using the US state shape file found on the National Weather Service website. And in order to have a single part layer to work with, I'm going to use the multi-part to single parts geometry tool on it. So to start, let's add that US state shapefile to our project. I'm going to zoom in on this main portion of the United States. And if I double click on the layer and head to the information tab, I can confirm that this currently has 59 features in it and the geometry type is multi polygon. So let's generate a single part layer from this. And that's going to be, we're gonna pretend that that is what we are starting with as we convert single part layers to multi-part layers. So I'm gonna head up to vector. I'm gonna choose geometry tools and choose multi-part to single parts. And I'm gonna leave all the defaults and actually just work with a temporary layer for now. So I'll run that. And that is now added to our project. And if I double click on this layer, I can see that the feature count is at 16,488 and the geometry is polygon, not multi-polygon. Now that we have this single parts layer, why don't we actually remove the old multi-polygon layer, pretend that it doesn't exist. The first method we're gonna cover is promote to multi-part and that's an algorithm located in the processing toolbox. This algorithm does not combine any features, it just creates a new multi-part layer from your existing single part layer, effectively changing the geometry type without altering any of the features. Each feature still only has one geometry, but you now have the option to add additional geometries to them. So we're gonna head up to the processing menu and click on toolbox. And that's gonna open up a new panel on the right, which is the processing toolbox panel. And then we're gonna search for promote and we're gonna get this tool promote to multi-part. If you double click on that, that will bring up a dialog box and it's going to ask for the source layer, which is our single parts layer. And again, we're just going to create a temporary layer for now and I will hit run. And that is already finished. And if I open up the properties for that layer, I can see I still have 16,000 features, but the geometry type has now changed to multi polygon. So this is useful if you are intending to add multi-part features and don't currently have any that you want to convert. So it's very basic. Next up is collect geometries. So like promote to multi-part, this tool also creates a new multi-part layer from an existing single part layer. The difference is it also lets you optionally designate one or more attributes in that layer that you wanna use for combining multiple features into one. If you don't specify any attributes, it will combine everything into one feature with all the geometries from the source layer. So to use this tool, we're gonna to head up to the vector layer and we're gonna choose geometry tools and then collect geometries. And now we have a new dialog box, which is asking us what our source is. So we actually wanna use the single part layer. And then we have this optional argument about which fields we wanna to use to specify which attributes to look at when merging. Uh, features together. So if we click this little triple dot here, we can actually, why don't I, let's take a look at the data here. I'm going to open up the attribute table and dock it below. And we can see that state name FIPS long and lat seem to always be the same amongst a particular state. So we actually want to use all of those. So if I head back to that tool, make sure I select single part, open up this dialog box, and I'm gonna check all of these. I can just hit select all, and then I'm gonna click run, and that's already done. It has created a new layer called collected. And if we look at the details of that, 
we can see we're back to having 59 features and it's now back to being a multi-polygon geometry type. Finally, there's aggregate, which is another algorithm found in the processing toolbox. This one is like a more powerful version of collect geometries. The two differences here are that instead of just looking for common attribute values to combine features, you can use expressions. And that will combine features that return the same value for the given expression. Additionally, the value of attributes can be determined by a function, including concatenation, min, max, count, sum, mean, median, and several others. So the example for this one isn't particularly practical, but it does show you how to use the expressions and functions available. So over on the right, we're going to look for aggregate and double click on that. And there's a slightly more complex dialog box. We're gonna make sure that the input layer and the load fields from are set to single parts. And then I'm going to group things by the length of the state name. It's silly, but it's just showing you the power of what you can do. So inside of the expression editor, I'm going to put length uh, name. Click okay on that. And then for each field, you're going to specify what happens to the value. So something to be aware of here is that you need to keep in mind any limitations to the fields. So I can't concatenate a bunch of states together because the maximum length of that field is two. What I'll do instead is just take the first value that comes up. Same thing with name. I can't combine them all together because there's a maximum length of 24. For that one, I'm just gonna take the last value uh, same thing with the FIPS value. Uh, and then for longitude and latitude, I'm just going to take the median of those two. I'm honestly a little bit rough on my map, my math, and I can't remember average versus mean versus median, but we'll just choose that. And with all that selected, we'll hit run. And this one's going to take a little bit more time because it's doing a lot more calculation and determining a lot of things. And why didn't it add it to, if I close this. All right. So now we have a layer called aggregated and I'm going to open up the attribute table for that. And it's going to look a little bit weird. I will dock this. And we're going to see now that we only have 14 features listed here and it's a weird mix uh, where the state name or the state abbreviation is AL but the name is Wyoming that's because we chose the first state that uh, was discovered and we chose the last name that was discovered so Alabama and Wyoming both have seven letters and if I click on this and uh, actually I'm going to hide the layers that are above it there we go if I click on these, I can select them and you can see which ones, which geometries got combined. Again, this is not a practical example, but it's just showing you how you can use both the expressions and the functions to combine single part entries into a multi-part entry. I hope learning about those tools helped round out single and multi-part layers for you. This video was made because somebody asked about going in the opposite direction outlined in the previous video. So if you have any questions of your own, please feel free to leave a comment and a like or subscribe is the best way to let me know that these videos are helpful to you. In the next video, I'll be showing you three ways to automate your data processing workflows in QGIS. See you then.